Hi, my name is Bill. I'm going to be your trainer today. Let's get started. In this lesson, we're going to talk about cone supports and prompt generation supports. The cone supports are only in the desktop and ultra versions of Magix, and the prop generation is only in the Perfectory version. But both modules are standalone modules, and either module could be added to your version of Magix at any time. I brought in this model here to demonstrate cone supports, and I'm in the desktop version and the desktop and the ultra version both have cone supports so the first thing that we want to do is check for errors diagnostic parts good and then we want to position it translate default I'm going to just give a little extra space here because if we put angle supports on this we're going to need a little extra space onto the build platform. We say OK. Unzoom. You can see the placement. So let's go into uh, modules, support generation. And we, if we generate supports, the automatic supports will generate. The cone supports can be used in conjunction with the automatic generated supports or the standard supports. For this demonstration though, I'm just going to go into our manual supports. So in the support module we have a icon for cone supports on the toolbar plus we can go into tools and we have an icon there also we can click on that and up pops a dialog box and this dialog box has the cone properties on it. And the contact to uh, part radius 1 is the top of the cone. So the radius of the top of the cone would be uh, 0.3 millimeters. The bottom of the cone, which attaches to the platform, in this case would be 1 millimeter. I can change that at any time, but I'm going to leave it back to 1 millimeter. You can also select angle. In this case, the top of the cone would be 0.3, and it would angle down at 3 degrees until it attaches to the build platform. I'm going to go back here and just put it back to uh, the contact of platform. And we also have Z offset. Z offset indicates how far will the cone penetrate the part. In this case it's going to penetrate the part 0.25 millimeters. Indicating indicates the cone uh, on no angle, it's going to go straight down from the part down to the platform 90 degrees. If we put, if we select angle by indicating, the software will allow us to indicate the angle from the part to the platform. On our first demonstration, we'll go no angle. We'll click on indicate. we want to indicate where we want to put the support. Indicate the surface, we take the left mouse button, we click on that, and it will create our support. Let's unzoom, Let's see what we have. Now to determine where I want to put these supports, I can again go into my Z multi-section and click on the and look for islands and any island that is created I'm going to have to create a support. So I'm going to continue all the way up and put a solid support on every island. I'm going to hit F11 just take the build platform away a little bit better viewing and I'm going to use my right arrow keyboard and continue up until I put a support on all the islands. After the islands are gone everything else is self-supporting. So I've added supports onto all my islands. 
so this is the results. Now if I continue up a little bit farther, we can see that I missed some here. And that's these islands right here. Let's put those supports on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to check right here. If I zoom in, we can see that the actual support is running into the part here. So that's where we want to delete this and we want to use this angle by indicating. So let's delete those two cones. I'm going to highlight them. I'm going to hold down the control button, highlight those two cones, right click and hit delete surface. So what I want to do is click on my angle by indicate then click on my indicate button again and then I'll rotate this a little bit and get a better direction I have that now it's asking me what angle so I'm going to unzoom here and then I'm going to put my platform back on so I can see it and it shows me the angle so I'm going to go a little bit into the top view here put it a little bit farther out that's four degrees, five degrees, we go five degrees, that's a and we can see that now it's not running into the part. So that's the benefit of the angle by indicating. Now there's another way to solve this issue. What we can do is uh, go leave it by uh, angle by indicate and then come back up here and the contact the uh, to platform radius I'm going to put at 0.3 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom into that same area I'm going to say indicate and I'll indicate that surface and now I'm going to indicate onto the prong below it now that creates now that creates a support structure between the two parts and again, it, the support is going into the part uh, 0.25 on the top and 0.25 onto the bottom. So you have two options on how to correct that issue. So let's unzoom this and look on the other side. Take our multi-section, bring it up to the part, and we have the same issue on the other side. So we have two options the way we can do it. We can angle it away and go down to the platform or we can simply use the part itself as a support. So let's turn off our Z multi-section. We'll unzoom We'll uh, take a look at this in our side view and we'll say OK to this. And so we have this part well supported. We have no islands. Everything else is self-supporting. We can exit our support module now. Exiting our support module, our normal process is to go to File and Export Supports. And we do when we go export supports, it's going to save our support file, our underscore s.stl support file. Well, we don't have conventional supports on this part. We have actual solid supports. The cone supports are considered solid supports. So I don't need to do this. I don't need to save this uh, support file. But if I had conventional supports, let's just cancel this. We'll put some conventional supports on here. If I, I had conventional supports on this part, I would have to save those this as a underscore s dot stl file also. But seeing that I don't have conventional supports, I don't have to save that. I'll go none, and I'll go exit support module 
this is again saving my magics file if I want to modify the uh, the support file I'm going to say no to this and we can see that the actual cones the solid cones became part of the part now this is very important since we modified the part and we modified the part by adding the solid cones to the part we have to save the part again we have to go file save part as and overwrite make it an STL file and overwrite the part file we're going to overwrite it we'll hit save and replace now in this case we have a single file STL file that the the supports are part of the part so now let's look at prop generation supports I loaded up magics in vision tech and magics in vision tech actually has prop generation that's this icon right here and then I also loaded this uh, this part here to demonstrate the the prop generation uh, you notice that I've put the cone supports on this part where I wanted some cone supports and then I also put traditional supports on it but there's still some problems with this and if I went into my Z multi-section and took a look at the potential issues zoom in here you can see we have some little islands here that requires support. Now if we put traditional supports or even uh, cone support there we'd be going all the way down to the build platform and there would be a lot of interference so we didn't, wouldn't want to do that. We'd have to go put a large angle on the cone support or we'd have to have some interference with the, the part itself. Another option we have is to create a prop support. To do that we're going to select this uh, prop generation icon dialog box comes up and we have three settings and the first setting is the uh, the width of a which is the main body of the support the diameter and we're going to set that to 0.35 and we can change that like any other setting I'll change that to 4 and then the end the diameter uh, or width of the uh, the B which would be the actual uh, support that runs into the part and then the uh, the end length between the part and the main body support so we're gonna say okay to that and what we do is we just hit add and now we can select the two surfaces where we want the support to go to so we'll select this surface and this surface and we can see that we have the uh, uh, the support in between if we looked at a view of that in the side view and so this would be the direction the support is going uh, or the part is growing so you can see that that's well supported so we can take the multi-section zoom up and go to the next area right over here I'll zoom into that and we'll create another support right there and so we have that area well supported so now we have uh, good support no islands in that area now down here we're going to have uh, a couple islands also and it would be it would be the same process so I created these two supports down here that are required and uh, let's unzoom and zoom in on this area right here let's bring down our Z multi-section see if there's any islands there so we can see that we do have an island that's going on here it's the same thing we could just add a support add here 
here we can actually go into this support also so you can see that we have the option to go into a previously created prop support we also have the option to remove a support that we created we can actually select on it and remove it so once we're done creating all our supports we have to hit apply and so once we hit apply you're going to see that the actual supports become part of the part just like the cone supports they become part of the part and once we change the part we have to save the part again so I'm going to hit close out of this and then I'm going to go into file and we're going to go and save part as and then we're going to overwrite this STL file so we're completed with this part we have two files we have the part file and we have that support file that uh, standard support file that we have so in this case we're going to bring in two files into our per factory software we're going to bring in the part file and the support file so that's the end of our lesson on how to create cone supports and prop supports that's the end of our lesson please review all our tutorials on the subject that you need help with bye now